Hello everybody, you're listening to Money Grows on Trees. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Money Grows on Trees is a series of broadcasts that briefly highlight certain portions of books that I have written or I'm currently writing that relate to money. To get more information on topics covered in this series, kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure you subscribe. That's where you'll be connected to get updates whenever new broadcasts like this are posted as well as broadcasts on a variety of different topics you also be getting access to other projects i'm involved with from movies to music to cartoons video games and everything else today i would like to tell you that a lot of times the difference between a little and a lot is a little let us open our Bibles to the book of Second Kings chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 15 to 19 using the King James Version of the Bible. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands and he said open the window eastward and he opened it and Elisha said shoot and he shot and he said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aflec till thou have consumed them and he said Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wrought with him, and said, Thou sh shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but twice, but thrice. Praise the Lord. You see, this is very important. This shows us that this king could have gotten absolute victory if he had done it two more times. It was just a little number of more times. You see, he was given a definite instruction by the prophets to take the bow and arrow and just shoot it eastward out of the window not at anybody but it was a matter of the obedience to the word and the significance and the power that went with it you see sometimes there are things that a prophet instructs people to do or god instructs people to do that is not about the thing itself but it is about your obedience to it and a lot of times it would have some significance that the person doing it may not understand but what is important is that you believe the word of the prophet or you believe the word of god and you do it you see just like when elijah told Naaman to dip himself seven times in the river jordan now Naaman was technically royalty and for him to dip himself seven times in the river jordan what did that have to do with getting his healing? But you see, he had to follow that instruction because that was where his miracle was. It was in the obedience. It was not necessarily, it was not at all in the river Jordan. You see, there were other people who were buffing there, you see, or doing whatever it was they were doing there. Other people used the river Jordan, but it had no healing power for them. But you see, it was a matter of obeying the instruction. Just like when Jesus turned water into wine, he gave an instruction that they should fill the jars with water and they should take it to the master of ceremonies. You see, that was an instruction. It was in that carrying out of that instruction that the miracle unveiled and unraveled so there are a lot of things like that in the realm of the spirits where a physical action 
changes things in the physical world, but via the spiritual, you know, something is done physically, but it has a spiritual significance and it's the power of the instruction and the direction of God behind it that now causes something else to happen that you may think that it is not related, that is not directly linked, you see. But you have to understand that the world is spiritual. The world is, first of all, spiritual. Everything we see around us was created from the realm of the spirit. It was created by a God who is a spirit, you see. And the world is created by the word of God. And you have to understand that it is written that God's word is spirit and it is life. So every physical thing comes from the realm of the spirit. So you can control the physical from the realm of the spirit. Even though you are doing something physically on earth, you see you are doing something that has spiritual significance and spiritual backing behind it. And it controls something physical in the future or in the present. In this portion of the scripture that we looked at, it was a matter of the king following the prophet's instruction and shooting those arrows eastward and if he did that and did it diligently sufficiently he would have completely consumed and totally defeated the syrians but you see because he did not do it to the extent that he should have he just shot only three arrows he ended up putting himself in a condition where he had victory, but he did not get total victory. You see, he would have completely consumed his enemies, you see, in this case. So this is something that you have to understand. Sometimes the difference between a little and a lot is a little. All this king had to do was to shoot at least two more times. You see, and this is very important with us in business. When it comes to business and in life, a lot of times, the difference between a little and a lot is just a little. You see, the difference between somebody who sells a car at an expensive price and somebody who is struggling to sell a car could be a little thing like washing the car you know there are people who try to sell cars without washing it they do not keep it clean you see that car being washed now automatically has or looks like it could go for a higher value in other words let's say that you wanted to sell a car to somebody and that person wanted to buy it for a specific price you see if that car is not washed the value of that car in the eyes of the buyer will completely decrease now it is the same car and even a new car that is clean we eventually get dirty so what is the difference between a clean car and a dirty car not much but you see it can make a lot of difference in your business it can make a lot of difference between the price that a customer is willing to pay some people may even bring out twice the price that they would have been able to shock out to pay for a car. You see, when the car is washed than when the car is dirty, they may not know that it is, the difference is just that it is a matter of the car being washed. But there's a way the car looks when it is washed. It looks shiny, it looks wonderful, it looks so pristine. You see, but all of that is gone. When the car is not washed just a little thing like that and the customer thinks that that car that is not washed is worthless but it could be the same thing and we are talking about in fact using that same car as an example you see so it is just a little thing like that as a matter of fact when you look at a lot of luxury cars and a lot of cars that people buy for expensive prices you see let us talk about cars that are extra that come with certain advanced futures the truth of the matter is that a lot of cars that come straight from the manufacturer with a lot of advanced futures those same futures that are added that 
make the price go super premium. Those same features that are added can be added to existing cars that are sold for lesser prices. You see, let us say that a car comes with, for example, a built-in tablet in the headrests. Because of something like that, the price of that car will be higher than a car that does not come with a built-in headrest. But guess what? Even a car that does not come with a built-in headrest, there are car seat jackets that come with provisions for you to place a tablet in. You see? So that add-on can be added to cars that do not come with such features and amenities. But you can see that the fact that it was added in built in another car, it has put that car at a higher price range. What if that manufacturer was smart enough to add all those features in his car that lacks so many features? What I'm just trying to show you is the difference between value and price especially when it comes to how people see things how customers see things and you yourself as a manufacturer you see it is actually not much the difference between luxury and cheap items is not much you see a lot of times the difference between a little and a lot is actually little let us use this other example what is the price difference between a house that has a swimming pool and a house that does not have a swimming pool but have the space of for a swimming pool you see that house that has the space for a swimming pool but does not have a swimming pool yet we go for far less than a price than the house that has a swimming pool so if you are listening to me now and you are selling real estate Add that swimming pool. You will boost the price. You'll be able to sell that house for twice the value. And, and I'm talking about you would exceed the cost of putting in a swimming pool. But guess what? If that person had bought a simple house that had the space for a swimming pool and that person put, it, put the swimming pool there himself, he would have spent less it would have cost him less so i'm just trying to show you something in commerce you see the difference between that house that has a swimming pool in it that is selling for an extraordinary amount of money and the other house that has space for a swimming pool but does not have a swimming pool and is selling for far less you see what is the difference and i'm saying this so that you know how to position yourself if you are buying, if you are somebody who is in the market, you are buying and you want to buy something, you have to understand this thing so that you will get quality and you will spend far less. And if you are somebody that is selling, then you know that you should upgrade and add all the extra futures to what you are selling. Because when you do that, you will now be able to sell for super extraordinary prices and it will look normal to the buyer for example if someone is coming to you to buy a house that has a swimming pool and right beside that house is also a house that does not have a swimming pool but has the space for the swimming pool and you are the real estate agent that is in charge of both of them you see that person is not going to want to ask you to bring down the price of the house that already has the swimming pool under the topic of the only difference is the swimming pool let me just pay for the price of installing a swimming pool no it will still go for that premium price you see what i'm saying so you have to understand these things and how people see things how people perceive things you see so when you are wise you know what to do and how to position yourself whether you are on the buying side or you are on the selling side. The difference between luxury and cheap is really not much, you see. And a lot of time, it's also 
a matter of the value that the manufacturer or creator puts upon his products or services, you see. But you can take a cheap product and add a few features to it and it will qualify as a super luxury product and you can sell it for an exorbitant amount. You can sell it for 3,000 times the price of what it costs you to install those features plus the original price of the material itself or the product itself. You see what I'm saying? So there is something that you must know and take into account. Basically, a luxury item is a cheap item that can be sold at a super expensive price because of a few cheap futures that have been added to it. Let me say that again. A luxury item is basically a cheap item that can be sold at a super expensive price because of a few cheap futures that has been added to it. So that shows you that that difference that difference that is made between cheap and luxury that difference that is made between selling something for a dollar and selling it for a million is just a little you see so you have to understand the importance of that little you must pay attention to the details you must watch those little things and make sure that you add value to what you have on ground do not underestimate or look down on certain things that you have there are possibly even cheap things that you have around you in your home that you are not using that you've thrown away in the basement if you could refurbish it you could sell it for on ebay for an amazing amount of money that would shock you you see so that is the truth of the matter and of course, I have my own mar online marketplace. You can go to alfredandfriends.com slash marketplace and sell your products there. You indicate that it is a used product. You would sell it for an amazing amount of money. So you have to be wise. You have to be smart and recognize this. The difference between a little and a lot is just a little. Remember the scriptures that we read? The reason why this king did not get complete victory over an entire nation was just because he didn't shoot an arrow two more times. You see, so take notes and make the adjustments in your life. I would like to say a prayer for all of you listening right now. In the name of Jesus, I command every sickness to leave your body. I command every disease to leave your body. You are healed now in the name of Jesus. I command every evil spirit and every demon of darkness to get out of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon and every evil spirit that is under the sound of my voice and is around or inside anybody listening to me, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Please contact us on PastorAlfred.com and tell us what the Lord has done for you. A lot of you have received your miracles. A lot of chains have been broken. This is a wonderful day for you. I would like all of you who are listening, who have not given your life to Christ before or who have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, to go to PastorAlfred.com and click on the Salvation Prayer link in the main menu. There you would have the Salvation Prayer Say it. There's also the prayer to receive the Holy Spirit into your life. Say that also. And that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.